Over the last 25 years, I've had the privilege of interviewing and highlighting some truly interesting people. Everyone who is anyone, both the famous and the infamous. From presidents and their first ladies to kings and queens. Movie stars and pop stars, captains of industry, heads of state, sports personalities, innovative entrepreneurs, and some pretty fascinating everyday people. Today, I am proud to introduce you to Dr. Joseph Wang, a dedicated Christian minister and teacher who feels it is his mission in life to serve, which has led him to teach and speak in many seminaries and churches all over the world. Dr. Wang, it is indeed a privilege to say hello to you and to chat with you today. Start off by just telling us, sir, what led you to become a religious educator? Now, many people have a wrong concept about that faith is Christian faith. A lot of people think faith is superstition. But my own experience is that Christianity is not a superstition. In order to believe Christianity, we need objective evidences. That's the reason why I gave my life to become a religion professor, to teach correctly how we should come to know God and on our basis, we need to know God because he does affect our life. Actually, Gordon O'Port uh, used to be the professor, of, well, yeah, professor, and also he was the chairperson of the Department of Psychology in Harvard University. Wrote a book, The Individual and His Religion. In that book, he gave many evidences about how Christian life, Christian faith, will affect a person's health or psychology. Mm -hmm. That's a very influ influential. And I like to do that kind of thing to people. Yes. People had a wrong concept about faith in Christianity. They said that, well, Christianity is like other religions, basically a superstition, but it is not. Because Christianity is based on, on objective evidence. In fact, when you look at the Bible, when Bible talk about faith, it's not talking about you just accept anything. Faith is based on evidence. Mm -hmm. The Bible said that. The New Testament said that very clearly. Like a, the Gospel of John said, Jesus performed many other signs. Other people call it uh, miracles, but John called it signs. Why? Because John wanted to say, Jesus did many other signs which are not written in this book. But I give you sufficient uh, objective evidences so that you can believe Jesus is a son of God. Yes. So in Christianity, very important, we say Jesus is God. It is not superstition. It's not that you like to like to accept or not, we have to look at the evidences. That's the whole issue. So in my teaching, I just emphasize the objective foundation for the face of Christianity. Yes, sir. You know, um, as a Christian, I also grew up knowing that Christianity was not about religion, it was about relationship yes. with God. That's right. That's right. You were right. <laughs> and as you approach the study of Christianity and the practice of Christianity, it's yeah. walking in or attempting to walk in the footsteps of Christ, as right. was his example. Right. How I am I doing, Professor? How am I doing? You're doing fine. <laughs> 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 Absolutely. So it's so curious to me. I grew up in the South, sir, um, where Christianity was literally a part of my everyday life. What was it like growing up as a devoted Christian in Taiwan where that faith is a significant minority? Right. You are, you are, you are just putting your hand on the very interesting questions. See, I live among them. 
I think that Christians, the population wise, is less than 5% in Taiwan. The rest are just all kinds of superstitions. Hmm. So people from time to time will ask me, why you be Christian? I say, well, in order to become Christian, you need to have faith, have the faith in Christ. Mm -hmm. But Bible doesn't accept us to say, okay, because I said it, you just accept it. No, Bible give us evidences. So that's the reason why John used that statement. Mm -hmm. Jesus performed many other signs which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you can believe that Jesus is the son of God, and he is our savior. That's the whole thing. Amen. So Dr. Wang, what aspects of Christianity in particular are you most fascinated by? And um, for those who are either non-Christians or are those who are just curious about Christianity, tell me how these aspects contribute to the depth of your faith, the evidences, the signs right. um, that you have spoken so eloquently about. There's a very important concept in the Bible called righteousness. Now, a lot of people take righteousness to mean we announce some people guiltless. That kind of concept. But I said, no. What is righteousness in the Bible? Both Old Testament and New Testament. Righteousness means good relationship basically with God and then with other people. Because we become related to God, God is concerned about establishing good relationship with us. And then every one of us individually become related to God, have a good relationship. Mm -hmm. As a result, we all become the, the child of God, the sons of God, in the sense of we have a very good relationship with God. And then between us, you are Christian, I'm Christian. Therefore, you are my sister, I'm your brother. Yes. We have a good relationship. So everything is based on good relationship. That is a very important concept in the Bible. Yes, and sir. I like to people to understand that righteousness in Bible is not pronouncing you guiltless. Mm -hmm. pronounce you no sin, but rather establish good relationship and that any act supporting or any act related to good relationship. When we have that kind of good, good concept, then the relationship between the Christian will be different. Yes, and then yes. our relationship with God will be different. Makes complete sense. And I'm, I'm curious because I was doing some reading about your previous work, and I know that you were a contributing author to the book, An Inquiry into Satirology. Oh, I, I'm, I wanna be very clear, so I know our, our viewers want to, what is actually satirology and how does it relate to your work with Christianity, sir? Right, that's a good question. <laughs> Soteriology is a t technical term. So theology means the theology of salvation. Salvation involves two aspects. One is salvation removes all the negative factors from our life. See, one, once a person begins to sin, the sin becomes a powerful power to control our life. So we would we cannot get rid of the control of the sin. For example, take for example. Interestingly, a lot of people are attending Ivy League. These are the good universities in the United States. But some people attending this, this uh, Ivy League, they become somehow involved in the drugs. And once they got into drug, see, a lot of people say, I talk to some uh, Ivy big people, student. They say, well, I, can, I have a freedom. I, can, I do not have freedom to try drugs, but I can also have the freedom to get rid of, get rid of the drug. But trouble once you try drug, 
drug become a power to control you. So you have no way to quit drug. Now th these are the, their own, own witness, their, their testimony, their experience that way. Same way, if we become, we are used to sin, the sin will totally control us. And the sin's power will push us to fight, to act against God. So the sociology is for God to remove these negative factors from our life. So we are no longer under the dominion of the sin. We are no longer under the dominion of the devil. But soteriology, salvation has the positive aspect. That is, we can establish good relationship, good relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And that God wants us to participate in his work. God's great purpose is to bring salvation to everybody in the world. God loves human mind, uh, humankind. So God wants us to participate in his work. That means that God loves us in a sense of love us to the point that he wants us to cooperate with him. Then we have an important mission. By doing this, our life will come for all eternity. We will not be missing anything. So the God's salvation, if you want to talk about God's salvation, we need to talk about three aspects. Namely, in the past, originally we rebel against God, but God is holy. So God cannot have a good relationship with anybody who has who is rebel against him. So because of this, God sent Jesus Christ to become, the Bible said, Jesus, the one who does no sin, has no sin. He just become sin for us. Namely, Jesus paid the price to bear the penalty of sin so that I, we don't have to, because we are united with Christ. We have faith in Christ. God, just well, that, that Jesus paid for our debt. Jesus, receive the penalty of sin in our, in our asset. Dr. Wang, before we go, I would love to know what, you know, with everything that you've accomplished, what would you say has been your greatest contribution to the field of religious study, sir? So why I chose New Testament? Of course, my study is I major in New Testament, but minor in Old Testament. We have to, our degree has had both Old Testament and New Testament. But because of, of the situation, we usually take our major in New Testament and minor in Old Testament. Okay. Now, what I want to I'd like to do is in my field, a lot of people misunderstood the New Testament. So I do. I basically teach in depth or the advanced exegesis of the New Testament in original language, in Greek language. So I don't explain from the English translation. I take it, take a original language, Greek. These are talking about how he talked the, talk the parables. Over there is clearly say. The English translation also is, is right. Talk about, I use parables so that they can understand according to their level of understanding. Yes. That way, they will understand my thing. The reason why is, see, Jesus knew that the Jewish people has a strongly monotheism. There is only one God. This God, we can see. But now Jesus come, and in a parable, Jesus, basically what Jesus is saying is, I am God. God sent me over to be your savior, to come here to prepare salvation for you. The Jew cannot take it. You dare to say, you blaspheme God. You dare to say, son of God. They reject him. So Jesus used parable so that they will not understand. 
We've talked a lot about faith. We talked a lot about religion. Yeah. What's the one thing you'd like uh, the viewer of this video feature to walk away with? Okay. Good. I'd like the viewer to know from what I said. Christianity is not is not a superstition. Yes. Christianity has a lot of objective facts as a basis for our faith. And uh, then, if we fully understand the Bible, there's no contradiction, contradiction in the Bible. And if you just obey God, right now, even in this life, God will guide you, guide your life. I wish I have more time, but I, I won't take your time because God has guided me in a very wonderful way. I think it's a blessing that you have shared your faith, um, not only personally, but professionally for so many years. And the impact that you have had on people's lives for their personal salvation, um, you have given us so many wonderful examples, but also in your teachings, yeah. you have educated other educators right. in a way to convey faith and religion as relationship with God. And I want to say thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much for this interview. Thank you, sir. <laughs>